Morning, boys. I've got a challenge for you this morning. I'm going to set an alarm on each of those phones over there. And then you guys need to see if you can stop the sound of the noise of the phone coming out by putting as many pillows and blankets, if you want, on top of it. And we'll see if we can stop the noise from coming out. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go grab some pillows along while I start the timer. Okay. Quickly, see how many pillows you can put on there to stop it from making a noise. You can use the blanket. Okay, let's see if we can hear the bells. Hi. Boys, can you still hear the phones ringing? Yes. Well, guess what? You know, that's similar in today's true story from the Bible. We are going to hear about how the Pharisees try to get the people to keep quiet and not sing the praises of our Jesus. But that's impossible. There's no way that we can hide who Jesus is. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our first internet Sunday school lesson. I hope you're sitting on a nice comfy couch or a nice comfy chair. Now, we won't be able to meet together like we usually do and have so much fun on a Sunday, but we'll still get to learn about Jesus, and that's the most important thing. But first, I think we should pray. Now remember, hands together and close your eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, we just give you thanks that we can come together through the internet. We just pray for our country and the whole world. We just pray for this coronavirus and we just pray that you heal the whole world and take away this horrible virus. We just thank you that can we can meet together like a digital church and we just pray that we learn something new about you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to start off by reading out the Bible. Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 19 and from verse 28. If you'd like to follow in your own Bibles, Luke can be found in, you tell me, is that the New Testament or the Old Testament? That's right, it's the New Testament. It's the third book of the New Testament. I'll be reading out the International Children's Bible, so the words might be slightly different to yours, but the words are fairly similar. Let's begin. After Jesus said this, he went on toward Jerusalem. Jesus came near Bethphage and Bethany, towns near the hill called the Mount of Olives. Then he sent out two of his followers. He said, Go into the town you can see there. When you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. No one has ever ridden this colt. Untie it and bring it here to me. If anyone asks you why are you taking it, say, The master needs it. The two followers went into town. They found the colt just as Jesus told them. The followers untied it, but the owners of the colt came out. They asked the followers, Why are you untying our colt? The followers answered, The master needs it. So they brought it to Jesus. They threw their coats on the colt's back and put Jesus on it. As Jesus rode toward Jerusalem, the followers spread their coats on the road before him. Jesus was coming close to Jerusalem. He was already near the bottom of the Mount of Olives. The whole crowd of followers were very happy. They began shouting praise to God for all the powerful works they had seen. They said, God bless the King who comes in the name of the Lord. There is peace in heaven and glory to God. Some of the Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, tell your followers not to say these things. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if my followers don't say these things, then the stones will cry out. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem where he knew he would be killed. Now, how did, we, how did he know he'd be killed? Well, he told the apostles that already. Now, if you turn in your Bibles one chapter back to Luke chapter 18 and verse 31 to 34, you can read that it says, Then Jesus talked to the twelve apostles alone. He said to them, Listen, 
We are going to Jerusalem. Everything that God told the prophets to write about the Son of Man will happen. He will be turned over to the non-Jewish people. They will laugh at him, insult him and spit on him. They will beat him with whips and then kill him. But on the third day after his death, he will rise to life again. The apostles tried to understand this, but they could not. The meaning was hidden from them. So after this, Jesus then goes to a village and sends two of his followers to go fetch a donkey. Now why a donkey? Surely if Jesus knew there was a donkey in that town, he knew there was some other, much more comfortable animal to ride. Besides, he was a king. Kings don't ride donkeys, kings ride horses. Well, it's important that he, went, that he rode in on a donkey because in the Old Testament, in Zechariah 9 verse 9, it was predicted that the king would come riding in on a colt. A colt is a young donkey, by the way. So when Jesus came nearer, the people started placing their coats on the ground and some palms on the ground before him. This is usually how they would welcome any king or important person into their city. They were singing praises to God because they knew that God had promised to send them a king. They knew by the miracles that he had done, the fact that he was riding in on a donkey and all the teachings he has done that he really, really was the king. Now the, the Pharisees asked Jesus to tell the people to keep quiet because they didn't really believe that he was the king. They just thought he was a good teacher. And they didn't want the other people to sing and praise and worship Jesus. Now, boys and girls, this is what it's like today in real life as well. A lot of people are like Pharisees. They sort of believe that Jesus existed. And they thought he did some good teaching. But they don't want to acknowledge that he was the king. We need to remember that Jesus is our king. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you lived up to all the prophecies that proved that you would be the king and that you would come riding into the town and that you are our king. We just pray that for all our friends and family who do not know you as king yet, that you would open their hearts and help them to learn that you are the king of everything and we need to bow down before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I've got some activities for you to do. Um, all our stuff is done through mustard seeds. So if your mom and dads or anyone else out there would like to support them, they make very good Sunday school teaching material and their link, their website is linked uh, below this video. But for the younger guys, this picture over here, you can sit and download on the link below. There's a link to a Google Drive and your moms and dads can download and print it for you. So this picture over here, for the younger guys, you guys can just color this one in. Then for, if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous or for some of the, the older guys, there's this option over here. And the second page is you have to cut out the different coats and just place them onto the worksheet in the correct order. Then lastly, this worksheet over here is probably for the older kids to sit and fill in. Um, you can some answer some of those questions. And lastly, you'll see this exercise over here, which is a, a coat. And I want you to write down something that you are grateful for, or you want to thank Jesus for something he's done for you in your life. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And uh, yeah, leave a comment if you're happy and learned something new today. Bye.